Hi, my name is Nora Sell and I am a sophomore here at North Fuse Campus, Carmel Campus, and I go to Noblesville High School. I am so excited to kick off this series, Motivational Moments, so let's just get started. Picture this. It's a Friday afternoon. The sun is shining and there's not a cloud in sight. Only one more week left before summer begins. You leave the school as the bell rings and you pack your stuff and you walk home. It seems to be just the perfect day. You round the corner and can see your house in the distance, just a few more houses to go. But all of the sudden you hear this sound. Was it a dog? Yes, but it was a growl. And as you see this dog, not just any dog, a massive dog, teeth out, growling and terrifying, it makes matters worse as it's running right at you. So what do you do? What do you think would be your natural instinct in this moment? How many of you would run, not thinking too much about where to go, just zoom, I'm out of here. How many of you would hide, climb a tree, jump in a car, hide in a trash can? And how many of you would freeze, paralyzed by fear with no clue what comes next? The answer obviously is different for everyone. While fight or flight might be our nation's general instinct, we would all have our own set of emotions and thought processes that would take place. Although this is a good example, I believe our uniqueness, the attribute in which God shapes us, is more than just our reactions to big, scary dogs. When it comes to the clothes you wear and the food you eat, the way you worship God, the list goes on. We all have our different ways of approaching this life, but here is the good news. Whether we believe it or not, each and every one of us is completely unique. And this does include the small things like the clothes you wear and the food you eat. However, it includes the big things like your written purpose in this life and who God has made you to be. So let's talk about this. What makes you unique? What does it look like to play the role or live the life God has created for you specifically to live? What does it look like to embrace your kingdom calling? If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Exodus 17. Now, the book of Exodus is in the Old Testament and outlines the journey of God's people, the Israelites. In this passage, Israel had just been freed from 400 years of slavery under Egyptian rule not the prettiest picture of God's chosen and perfect nation. However, Moses had just led the people out of slavery and into freedom. Their fearless leader has no clue where he is going. However, he knows God will lead them there safe and sound. Then this happens in the first leg of their journey. Exodus chapter 17, eight through nine says, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites in Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of a hill with the staff of God in my hands. As you can imagine, the worst has happened. On this journey, they come across the Amalekites who choose to attack them. At the back of this massive group of Israelites, you would find a number of women and children and sick and poor who couldn't easily keep up. And this is where the Amalekites chose to attack them. As you can imagine, this shows just how shattering this was for the recently freed Israelite people. As a result, the leader of God's people, Moses, devises a plan 
Joshua is going to assemble an army of people to fight the Amalekites and Moses is going to a hilltop to plead to God that God will save them. Then this happens next. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered and Moses, Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. This visual is incredible. Joshua and Moses, men we hear about all the time in the Bible, fighting with God at the center of it all. Joshua is on the ground leading the people to freedom and Moses is on a hilltop, hands lifted high, praying to God, this is the kingdom of God. This is the highlight real moment of the Bible, right? Not exactly. You see, this was a long battle, long enough that Moses' hands began to grow weak. The work of supporting a nation in prayer takes a lot of dedication and faithfulness. The battle was beginning to wear on Moses. As his hands began to fall, the Amalekites began to win. But here is how the story ends. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Aaron and Hur, wait, who are these guys? These are not the heroes we have been talking about in our story, yet here they are. They see Moses at this time of weakness and they intervene. They placed a rock underneath him and with one on each side, they joined Moses in the effort to plead to God to save his people. In fact, I would argue that Aaron and her's willingness to play this role in this battle meant just as much as Moses praying in the first place. Because of this moment in scripture, the Israelites win their first battle as a nation and they are able to continue on their life full of freedom and fullness. When we look at the Bible, we see the Joshua's and the Moses's and the Peter's and the Paul's, but what about the Aaron and the hers? People that don't have their name written in the hall of fame for Christianity, the people that embrace their kingdom calling even when it didn't lead to a big shiny stage with their name for all to see. What about the Aaron and her moments in life? The truth is Aaron and her were not commanded by Moses to hold up his hands. Aaron and her volunteered. They were willing to do whatever means necessary to secure a victory for God's people and God's glory. They may not seem like the mighty men of God in this story. However, God chose to use them to accomplish great things simply because they were willing. You are not born qualified for everything that God has for you. He will equip you at the right time for which he has planned. At one point in my life, I was struggling on this matter and finding my purpose. And my mom told me, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. In this moment, God had a calling on both Aaron and her to be exactly what Moses needed. For Aaron and her, their call in God's kingdom was not to be a hero, but to be one small piece that made the biggest difference in the long run. God called them because they were willing. God called them because they understood and they embraced their kingdom calling. What about you? I'm sure if God called on any one of you to be a Moses, knowing all the clout he gets for being a hero in the Bible, you would probably say yes. But what about when God calls you to be an Aaron? What about when God calls you to be a her? What if God calls you to hold an arm, not the staff of God? 
would you still be willing? You see, I have no doubt in my mind that each and every one of you will have your Moses moment. These moments that change everything, where God uses you in such a spectacular way that everybody that gets to know you knows that something awesome was happening in your life. But I also know your life will be full of Aaron and her moments too. Big or small, I believe God is calling us to divine appointments each and every day that will make an impact in his story. Aaron and her knew they weren't likely going to be the names that everybody remembered from this story. However, they didn't sit and wait around for their Moses moment. God has something special and specific for each and every one of you on this earth. He created you in his image and called you beautifully and wonderfully made. But with that comes a calling that nobody on this earth has. My question for you today is, are you going to sit around and wait for your Moses moment? Or will you choose to follow and embrace the kingdom calling God has placed on your life, even when it leads to an Aaron and her moment? Are you faithful in your calling in both the big and the small? Hey there, thanks so much for checking out our YouTube channel. You're still here, so why not stay a while? Go ahead and drop a like and click that red button so you can enjoy some fresh new Northview students content every single week. You don't wanna miss a thing. We promise that you're gonna be challenged, encouraged, and most importantly, inspired. So what are you waiting on, fam? Join us.